What is going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link, and today is the day it happened. The Destiny 2 Expansion 2 Warmind Reveal Stream has just concluded, and we've learned quite a few new things about the upcoming DLC pack for Destiny 2. A couple of things that we're going to have to talk about in today's video. Now, there's an absolute butt-ton of new things to cover, so there's no way I'm going to be able to do it all in one video, but I'm going to try to cover as many things from the reveal stream as well as a few bits of news that came out afterward that I can. So first things first, Bungie did hold their reveal stream today. It was about an hour long, it featured several developers, and gave us a couple of things to talk about. First off, we got to see the new trailer showing off Anna Bray. That's right, it is indeed Anna Bay who's going to be our new NPC narrator for the Destiny 2 expansion for Warmind. That lines right up with a few previous leaks. We previously speculated that it would be Anna Bray who would be accompanying us throughout the story of Warmind, and that has been 100% confirmed. And yeah, she is absolutely Anna Bay. But after that, they jumped right into the good stuff. We got to see Mars and the Hellas Basin. In addition to seeing a bunch of new weapons and armor sets, we got to see the new Hive Escalation Protocol game mode. And it's been confirmed. It basically is a survival horde-based mode in Destiny 2. The easiest way for me to describe it to you would simply be, uh, it's basically the Court of Oryx from the Taken King and the Archon's Forge from Destiny Rise of Iron mixed together. It takes place in the Hellas Basin on Mars and it's going to be kind of like a public event. Although, when I say public event, it's not something you have to wait for, you know, to, to, to finally come around and activate. You can actually manually activate this whenever you want. You can go in, it's round based, it can go up to level 7 and each increasing wave is going to throw tons and tons of hive based enemies at you with tons and tons of bosses. They showed a lot of this off on stream and if you'd like to watch that stream there is of course an archive over there available on Bungie's Twitch page and their YouTube channel or you can watch our live commentary coverage of it right here on YouTube. But once you've activated the game mode, your job is simply to clean out all of the hive before your time runs out. And as you complete those objectives, it's going to start spawning other hive enemies all around the battlefield, as well as other objectives like crystals and whatnot that you'll have to destroy, and high value targets who will pop in and try to ruin your day. And as you continue to clear wave after wave, you'll face increasingly difficult waves of enemies as well as new bosses that are unique to this game mode, including some unique night mobs that you can take out and even pick up their swords just like you could back with the Blades of Crota in Destiny 1. They brought that back, baby. And that's just the start of it. There's going to be unique weapons and armor sets that are tied to the Hive Escalation Protocol, stuff that you can only get from running this Horde-based event. These will drop generally as rewards from defeating any of the unique bosses that are tied to the Hive Escalation event that will be on rotation every single week. There's going to be five different bosses that you can fight every week of the game. Meaning not only are you going to have a place to spend a ton of time once you reach in game, this activity unlocks after you've beaten the Warmind story, you're going to have some actual stuff to go for because they've got their own weapons and armor sets tied to them and the abilities that are on those weapons are unique to this activity. One of the examples they showed off on stream was a shotgun that looks suspiciously like the sleeper simulant. It's got a very special ability. When you melee an enemy, it puts a debuff on them that causes the shotgun to deal more damage, have better handling, better accuracy, and I think it changes the damage fall off rate for the shotgun. It's really cool and it allows you to put out some really big crit damage if you uh, melee an enemy first. It's the same thing with a sniper rifle. It comes with like triple tap and this ability to deal massive crit damage. Way more bonus crit damage than what you're expecting. And just little cool things like that that add into the in-game grind. They give you a reason to come back to the Hive Escalation Protocol and run it over and over and over again, sort of like you did, or sort of like I did at the very least, with the Archon's Forge and the armor sets and the weapon sets that were tied to that. It looks really, really cool, and it also has its own relic tied to it. The new Valkyrie kind of pole staff relic is something you can get in this game mode and utilize, just like you could with the Axes and Rise of Iron, and just like you could with the Swords of Crota. You can kind of charge it up, do a ranged attack, do this gigantic slam on the ground. We got to see a couple of seconds of it, and it looks really cool. Of course, we got to see that in the teaser trailer yesterday. 
So yes, the new Hive Escalation Protocol is a new horde mode that's a mixture of Court of Oryx and the Archon's Forge. It's got its own bosses, its own gear, its own loot, and its own challenges tied to it that you'll be able to enjoy once you've beaten Warmind's story, and it looks absolutely fantastic. But that's not the only thing they showed off on stream today. We also got to see some private matches, a new map, and of course, they focused on some of the changes that have come to some of the exotic weapons in the game. We got to see the changes to Graviton Lance, to the Sturm and the Drawn. We got to see the changes to the Skyburner's Oath. A lot of that stuff that they've teased before today that we've now seen in action in their private games on stream. One of the things that they hadn't revealed before today was the change coming to Hardlight. We all know Hardlight has no damage fall off, it can over penetrate targets, and it ricochets off hard surfaces. Well now, when you ricochet shots, those shots that have bounced off of a surface deal double damage. So if you can catch some enemies in some tight alleyways, you can potentially put out some really big lulzy damage before they can recognize what's going on. It's kind of crazy, but this isn't all that was revealed today. That's really kind of all they talked about on stream. Just the new game mode, Anna Bray, they showed off a little bit of Mars, they talked a bit about the story with Rasputin and whatnot. We can cover all of that in another video. The biggest things to take home were of course the Horde mode with Hive Escalation and the big changes coming to Exotics. But one of the other big things they mentioned were the changes coming to PvP Ranked Mode. We've got our Ranked Playlist coming in with 1.2.0. Now, this of course was talked about months ago when they unveiled the fact that they were bringing Ranked Playlists. We're gonna have two of them. Valor's more casual. Uh, as you play in complete games and even win in that playlist, your, your rank is gonna go up, but it won't drop. Glory is going to be tied to the competitive mode, and it's going to track your performance. When you win, your rank goes up. When you lose, your rank goes down. And now, as a part of this change up to PvP with the rank playlist, they're introducing new loot that's tied to your rank. Every season is going to have its own specific gun to grind for. We got to see the first one we'll have access to. There's going to be a new pulse rifle called Redrix's Claymore, and its ability is absolutely bonkers. It's got Outlaw on it right off the bat, but it's also got a very special, unique ability called Desperado. When you reload while Outlaw is active, it increases the gun's rate of fire. Now this is a high impact pulse rifle, so it deals a lot of damage per shot, but its normal rate of fire is very slow. When you activate Desperado, that rate of fire shoots through the roof without touching the impact level of the pulse rifle. That's right, you can still deal the exact same amount of high hitting damage, but even faster with Desperado active. And while they didn't show too much of it on stream, other people who were invited out to the Destiny 2 Summit last week got some great gameplay of it. You can go check out Mesa Sean's channel. He shows this off prominently and the rate of fire increase is significant. This thing is going to absolutely slap in PvP. And the only way to get it, the only way to get your hands on the Redrix's Claymore is to get like the second highest rank within the Glory rank mode. That's right, competitive only. This is a huge incentive for people to play in the competitive playlist. And yeah, if you're somebody who doesn't play competitive or doesn't play PvP, you're probably not going to have access to it. And I find that both fantastic as an incentive to play competitive and terrifying as somebody who doesn't play a lot of competitive because this thing is super duper strong, and it's ultimately the exact kind of thing I want to see moving forward. They talked a bit about how when May 8th comes around, when Warmind goes live, you'll be able to go to Shax, he'll show you all of the different weapons that you'll be able to earn across like different seasons and different activities and PvP and whatnot, and show you what you need to do in PvP, like whether it's get, I don't know, a thousand pulse rifle kills to get this weapon or ornament or something, or get 500 auto rifle kills to get this. He'll show you the, all the things that you can earn. This is the kind of thing I want to see added not only to PvP, but to strikes, to lost sectors, to public events, to world spaces. I want to see lists of super powerful weapons that are exclusive to all the different bits of content within Destiny 2. And I have to say, this is a fantastic step forward. Seriously, all this new loot looks super good and I cannot wait to get my hands on it. Again, you can go check out some of the other content creators who went up to Bungie last week. A lot of them are posting videos showing in full the weapons and armor sets that are tied to stuff like the Hive Escalation Protocol. Uh, a lot of people got to play with Redrix's Claymore, so just go check out any of your favorite PvP people or PvE people and they've probably got videos showing it off right now. I think Mesa Sean has a great video showing off all of the weapons he got to play with. But anyway, those are the biggest things that were revealed within the live stream itself. Now, 
Alongside this, we also got, of course, the launch of the expansion to Warmind website. You're taking a look at that right here. This went up right after the stream itself concluded, and it shows off some pretty interesting stuff. Let's take a look at it. Of course, we got the trailer there. It shows, you know, a quick slide for the Hellas Basin in Mars. You can take a couple of looks there, but if you go through, you find out that our new enemy, our new frozen hive buddy, are of the faction Grasp of Nocris. These fanatical followers of Zal have been dormant in the frozen wastes of Mars for centuries. Now, they claw their way to the surface, intent on conquering and consuming in the name of their god, basically confirming that this new frozen brand of a uh, hive are the new enemy types that Bungie was talking about. That's got me a little bit bummed. I was hoping that whole thing about them using frames and whatnot as an enemy type was going to be real, but we'll take this, because Nocris, if you remember back from Destiny 1, that's an old reference back to the Taken King. If you remember during the Regicide mission, you can find that statue to Nocris that you can scan and learn about from way back then. So we're finally learning about Nocris and the faction of Hive that serves them. The new official website for the Warmind expansion, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below, also gives us some great new screenshots of the Escalation Protocol and of the two new strikes we'll be engaging in in Destiny 2 Warmind. The first of the new strikes is titled Strange Terrain. Descend deep into the tunnels under Hellas Basin and take the fight to the Herald of Zal. Stop this Hive Prince before he can funnel more power to the Worm God. And this looks like we're going to be taking on Nocris. One of the Hive bigwigs themselves. Additionally, we'll also be taking on the new strike, Will of the Thousands. Rasputin's neural network is under attack. Take the Valkyrie and use it to defeat a monstrous foe. Doesn't really give us too much information about what we'll be fighting there, but it looks like a gigantic Hive knight in the picture with the new Valkyrie relic weapon. Some really exciting stuff, and when it comes to the Valkyrie, the new relic weapon, we got to see a little bit of that on stream, and it's described as this. A powerful javelin that's a gift from an unlikely ally. Use it well, Guardian. Looks like Rasputin's giving us a little bit of a handout with the javelin there, and we get to see a bit of how it works in live streams and, of course, in the previous trailer. It looks like it's going to be a super cool new addition to the game. So there you go, Guardians. There's been an absolute ton of new stuff unveiled today, but like I said before, there's absolutely no way I'd be able to cover it all in one video. So that's pretty much everything that was shown off and confirmed in the Bungie reveal stream today. There's certainly a lot more stuff to talk about, and we'll be covering that in later videos. So that's it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. What do you think of this new information from Warmind? Are you psyched about the new Horde mode? Does the Valkyrie Relic weapon look awesome to you? Are you just looking to get some new weapons new armor, or are you still going to be sleeping on Destiny 2? <laughs> Either way, be sure to let me know how you feel down in the comment section below. If you're there for the live stream today, thanks so much for tuning in. We had over 700 people uh, there at the peak watching this stuff and kind of interacting with us as we were learning more about Destiny 2's next expansion. And I really appreciate the support. It shows that there's still a lot of love for this game and a lot of people who want Destiny 2 to be good. Mm. Hopefully this uh, Warmind expansion is a good first step towards that. But alright, I'm out for now. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, make sure you subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest Destiny 2 Warmind news that's going to be coming out. That's it for me. As always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.